man, a good man. And what do you think of Ted Cruz, Grandpa? Um, he, does, I don't think he knows Ted Cruz. And and the story. That's the end of the discussion. That's just what I said. That's it. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, do you want to win the election or you want to go down with the ship because you're such a purist? You know, Blackbeard the pirate. I'll stick to my guns and I'll go down with the ship rather than win the battle. Well, I'm going to send you a book for Grandpa and you, Julie. It's uh, called Government Zero. God bless the farmers of America. That's all I can say. Without them, we'd have nothing. We'd be eating nothing. We'd be eating sawdust. Now, let's go to the next caller on the Savage Nation. That opens up 53 lines at 855 we're open for any topic that I've touched on, in fact, and then some. We're going to make an open mic to Mike third hour. I want to, I want to diversify or versify. I want to make the third hour more versatile. Sometimes you confuse the word diversify or diversity with versatility. But the truth is that without versatility in radio, it becomes, I don't know, not for me interesting that much. I'm talking only about my own show. I, I want to be a little more all over the place. In order for me to be interested, I think, for you to be interested. I'm a good leader. I'm a good scout leader. I can lead the conversation, react to people very well. So I'll let you lead the show now. And when we can hit any of the topics I touched on or a new topic. Uh, liberals, conservatives, Shmamni, Hamni, Cruz, and Trump. Taxes, death, coffins, dogs, teeth, uh, cardiologists. I have to go Monday with the dog. I never thought I'd take a dog to a cardiologist in my life. And the day would come in my life that I'd be taking a dog to a dog, cardio a dog cardiologist right after the show Monday to see what the murmur situation is. I don't know where the murmur came from. Probably from listening to my show, he got a hot murmur. <laughs> Probably listening to the horrible news, the dog has a hot murmur. I think every time Obama speaks, his heart skips a beat. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Here we go, folks. No matter what I say, here it comes. Line three. Go ahead, my friend from WSBA Radio. What's on your mind? Okay, uh, you say that Cruz is unelectable, but then you also say that the quote-unquote purists are the one that stayed home and gave us Obama second term because they didn't come out and vote for Romney. Wouldn't the logic stand that you nominate a person like Cruz, who's obviously the clearest conservative on the stage, then that base would come out and support him and you would win? All right, you're making good sense, but let's analyze it a little a little more deeply. He is the most conservative on the stage. Then why did he vote for uh, Obama's fast track trade trade agreement with China, the TPP, for the Asian nations? If he's so conservative, well, I would I would say what you said earlier. No one's a hundred percent your way. Oh, not way. You just said he's the most conservative. But you said he voted for TPP, which is as liberal as it as it gets. So he's not really a hundred percent conservative, is he? He's borders language culture. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You just said he's the most conservative one on the stage, Ted Cruz. But you also admit that he gave Obama fast-track trade with the uh, Southeast Asian nations, which is a very liberal thing. So, therefore, you've admitted that he's not 100% pure, correct? Uh, it's true. He's not 100% pure. Like I said, he's not. All right, good. So now we have two candidates who are not 100% pure, Trump and Cruz. So you're choosing a candidate who's, who's not 100% pure, but you think he's more pure than Trump. Yes, I do. And would you rather lose the election to Hillary or have someone who's less pure? But I, I don't think you would lose. I think the base would come out and support a candidate like that. I don't... Right, hold it. They probably would. But he would lose all of the swing voters that wouldn't come out for him, who would come out for Trump. And he'll lose all the Democrats who will come out for Trump and won't come out for Cruz. So in the big picture, you lose the election. And so I have to ask you, and you're raising a very important point, by the way. Would the base that did not come out for Romney come out for Trump if he was the only candidate? That's really the only question of the day. Well, I think they would. If it's Trump and Hillary, I think they would. I know I am. That, see, now that's the most important thing anyone said today. And that's all that matters. My feeling is they would, and I'll tell you why. Because they found out by cutting their nose despite their face they got Obama last time. And they have to hold their nose if Trump's the candidate. They're going to have to hold their nose and say he's not perfect, he's far from it. I know he's a social liberal or whatever. I'm going to vote for him anyway because I'll get something out of him that's nationalistic. And they'll vote for him. That's my feeling. And here's the thing that you've got to watch for, my friend. When Trump is nominated, as I think he will, and he runs... 
I want you to start listening very carefully to radio, and I want you to decide who has been most consistent and who will s switch gears as fast as they can to say they always supported Donald Trump. I'm sending you government zero because you're such a careful listener. 855-407-2822. What's this now? Uh, we have Ty KLIF. They're still listening to me in Dallas. I went across the street from BAP to KLIF, to their regret, I'm sure. And now everyone went over. Yeah, KLIF, they're both great stations, by the way. I was on KLIF for years. Way back years ago, before Cumulus, I used to be on KLIF. Did you know that? They're both great stations in Dallas, and I think my audience has gone across the street to listen to me. And I'd like to take some of the calls. Shannon, on KLIF, line number eight on the Savage Nation, go ahead, please. Well, we're certainly still listening to you in Dallas, I can tell you that for sure. But that, Thank God. I don't want to lose Dallas. You lose Dallas, you lose America. Well, that's right. And I think Donald Trump is going to win Dallas as well. So, But, you know, the thing that hasn't been talked about a lot, at least I've not heard it, on the mainstream media is what happens if Hillary Clinton isn't the candidate. And I guess it's because the mainstream media doesn't want to think about that. But if that happens, I mean, through an indictment or just her losing these first three um, primaries and, and caucus, I don't think it's going to be Bernie Sanders because the the Democrat establishment is not brain dead. I mean, they can figure. No, no, they're no, they're not that insane. My guess, you want my guess of what'll happen if, if she's indicted or if let's say she drops out owing to the pressure of the indictment and they, they give her a behind the scenes plea deal, or God forbid, a health issue. If she drops out, it's not Sanders versus uh, a Republican. Uh, old Joe Biden will be thrown into the ring. They're warming him up in the in the in the dugout right now in the in the ble in the bullpen. He's out there in the bullpen getting ready to run. He's the he's the only thing they they've got. They'll run old smiley face out there. That's my guess. What do you think? Well, I, that was my guess as well because he's in that race, and I think Trump is going to have the nomination for the Republicans, and it's probably mm -hmm. the close race between Trump and Biden. I, I think if it's Hillary or or if it's the, the clown Sanders, I, I think Trump is will, will have a lens. Well, no, you raise an extremely interesting point, which I really didn't think about till now. That if Hillary is knocked out of the box and they put Biden in, and it would be Biden versus Trump, it'd be a, almost a, a race too close to call. Because Biden is such a phony, and Biden would appeal to the uh, white union Democrat who's now going to Trump, that it might not be a good thing for Trump. So we better pray that Hillary doesn't drop out. You know, here's hoping or that, or that she gets indicted. Uh, you know, and I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, I mean, I mean, Biden would be a continuation of the same maniacal policies that we've had for eight years. He's done nothing to stop the madness, nothing. So I think he's a terrible man, a horrible man, who's gotten away with it because of this, you know, the smile and he's always in the background like the auto dealers. He reminds me of a, of a friendly automobile salesman, Biden. Uh, of a kind of car that your father would have bought, that you yourself wouldn't buy. Stay on the line. I'm sending you a free gift. Government Zero, back in a minute. It is the Savage Nation. I want to be 113. I want to outlive the world's oldest man and say that stress is not only harm, not harmful, it's good for you. <laughs> that, you that stress is actually good for you. I mean, if stress, if stress were bad for you, I would have been dead at 11. That's all I can tell you. Nine, eleven, top. From the diet I had and the stress level I was under, I wouldn't have made it past my 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 uh, bar mitzvah. <laughs> Thirteen, no way in the world. Genevieve on KSFO, line eight. What's on your mind, Genevieve? Hi, Michael. I'm a person who voted for Obama both times, and I have lived to regret it. And this time, I will vote for Trump if it, if it's Trump versus Clinton, uh, for sure. Uh, it says on the board that you're a Berkeley Democrat, voted for Obama twice. Is that true? True. It's, Is that true? <laughs> Is, are, you, are you from Berkeley, California? Uh, Again, no conversation. I'm going to break something. One more, one more no here I'm breaking. Uh, are Genevieve, Genevieve, are you from Berkeley, California? I am. Oh, thank God you answered me. I was ready to break my microphone. So you're a lifetime Democrat. You voted for Obama twice. I assume this is not the first time you've tuned into me, right? No, it isn't. I actually tune into you quite regularly. But why? If you're a, a screaming, flaming leftist, why do you listen to Michael? Um, I like to get all points of view. All right. So I got that. It's like my father reading newspapers from across the spectrum. 
have I ever given you um, pause for doubt as to your politics ever? Not really, because you, you, I have a definite conservative streak when it comes to um, integrity and personal responsibility and love of country and service and all those things. <laughs> that sounds like you're a conservative to me. Why would you have voted for Obama? Um, I think I bought into the hope and change. It's because you live in Berkeley and you didn't want to be ostracized at the chocolate factory. Now, why would you vote for Trump? Um, I am very much, I, I want this nation to get back to having an immigration policy that is enforced. Okay, so you've had enough of the third world invasion of Berkeley. Oh. Even a, a, die, a diehard liberal doesn't even understand what city she's living in anymore. She feels like she's walked into a bazaar somewhere in the Middle East. All right, Genevieve, I'm going to really make your life interesting. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero in a plain brown wrapper. So when it arrives, your neighbors will not ostracize you from the chocolate factory. When I come back, it opens a line at 855-407-282. Be here, be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Mascara and look like a freak and make a fortune in America. All right, turn it off. Put on nail polish if you're a man. Put on mascara. Get tight leather pants and then whine on the stage. The next thing though, you're in the White House. See, so here's the headlines of the day. Hillary Clinton's latest Iowa poll numbers are borderline disastrous. Comes from the Guardian newspaper in London. With only 11 days to go before the Iowa caucuses, a new CNN ORC poll, as you know, they're right wing. Released just this afternoon, the right-wing CNN poll, released today, finds Vermont Communist Senator Bernie Sanders with an astonishing eight-point lead over Hillary Clinton in Iowa, 51 to 43. Dramatic reversal of fortunes for the former senator, our former secretary of state, who led uh, Commie Sanders by 18 points last December. The poll, of, blah, blah, okay, so Sanders is, is uh, commanding a big lead. In Iowa, big deal. What is Iowa? What, Iowa represents America. I don't understand this obsession. It's not 1873. Get out the Buddha, the buggy whip already with Iowa and New Hampshire. I, the whole election process makes me embarrassed to be an American. How can you take a pluralistic nation like this, with a massive number of immigrants in big cities, and look at Iowa, which is largely a Caucasian nation, a Caucasian state? Excuse me. Homogeneous, religious, God bless them. It doesn't represent anything but that demographic. And New Hampshire, tax dodging people who live uh, in, and they can't afford to live in Boston, so they live in New Hampshire. That represents America? A bunch of tax dodgers living in a little state like that? How in the world are we still doing a thing like this? What's this now? Another story about ICE that does nothing, no kidding. Another story about DHS that does nothing, and he still has his job? Only in this country could that man keep his job. All right, 855 uh, KSFO, Mike, thanks for listening. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, I'm a nationalist, but I'm unsure how to feel about trade. I don't know whether I should be a free trader or a protectionist. I can argue both sides. I wanted your opinion. My opinion is put tariffs on goods from China to start with. Uh, I'm very consistent in that position in both of my books, and people who claim that they're for free trade are not really conservatives at all. They're following some kind of weird conception of, of conservatism. Who says that free trade is conservative when there is no such thing as free trade if the other country is not playing by the same rules? If they're putting tariffs on American goods and we're not putting good, uh, tariffs on their goods, would you consider that tra uh, free trade? I wouldn't. I, I, I don't, but my question is, who does, who does a tariff hurt or does it really hurt? And I, I remember, I think it was on your program, you said that the 29 depression started with Smoot-Hawley, which was the tariff program. But I'm, I'm No, really no, I, I didn't say that. No, I never said such a thing. It, did not, it, was, it was not what triggered the depression. That, that's a misnomer. That comes from the same wing of the Republican Party that is now disguising itself 
as being conservative. They're anything 